closing your period and or your year can be very, very hectic. You've got a lot of things to do in addition to your normal duties. You need to produce accurate financial statements. You need to prepare for the new accounting month, fiscal and or calendar year. Your ERP system allows you to perform period end and year end closing at the end of each accounting period and your last fiscal accounting period of the year. This process clears your period to date balances and moves them to the prior period. At year end, the process also clears the year to date balances accumulated in the master files and prepares you for the new year. We've prepared a series of topics to help you every step of the way and there's a lot of resources available for you. Now, again, very anxious time, a lot going on, but if you approach this very methodically, we can all get through this without a lot of anxiety. So you want to make sure you have a good, tested backup. That's the number one most critical thing that we recommend. You need to follow the suggested order of closing so that inadvertently things don't happen that you may not want to have happen. You want to follow your checklist. You'll need to ask your business partner if there are any special circumstances that you need to be aware of prior to closing. You'll want to access the SAGE website for important closing information, especially when you get to the end of the calendar year. It would be probably helpful to create standard communications to send to your targeted employees that will be involved in closing the month to prepare them. What do they need to have available and ready to close the month? Now, we need to really be aware of the order that we close. And the order logic assures that a module that writes to another is processed first. For example, sales order can post to inventory, accounts receivable, and general ledger. So it should be closed prior to those modules. And this is a key thing that you need to keep in mind. There is an order of closing that you can find on the website. You're seeing it displayed here. And you would want to follow this in order so that everything is processed in, a, in the logical framework for those modules that write to each other. You'll notice that our very number one task is to do a backup. And again, make sure that you've tested that backup because if something goes astray, then you have something to return to. Then you'll process these modules in the order listed here. Of course, if you don't have a particular module, you would ignore that. But by going in this order, it will verify that you have a very systematic, clean close. Not all of the modules listed in the order of closing chart have an actual period end processing menu task, such as bank reconciliation. But the list reminds you to take care of tasks in those modules as well prior to closing. You'll notice the very last step is to post and close your general ledger. After you've reconciled everything and reconciled your general ledger, then you're ready to close the general ledger. There are a number of checklists that are available in the various modules for you. And it can be very helpful for those folks who are involved in closing to have these module checklists available. Again, you can find them right in the help. Now, when you're actually ready to close, you need to make sure that everybody is out of the system, or at least the module that you're going to be working on. And you can run your master console to verify that. This situation is ideal because it illustrates that there's only one user and nothing is accessed other than the desktop. When you run your master console, it will show you the workstation that's being used, who's logged on to that workstation, the company and the program they're logged on to. So it's a real quick way to verify that nobody is in any modules that are going to be impacted. If you do find that a user is in there, of course you can phone them, email them, you can even use this screen to broadcast a message. You can also use this screen to shut down all workstations once everybody is back to their desktop. Now, do you really have to do a month end close? You know, whenever you post transactions, they are being stored based on the posting date and that posting date defines the period that they're reflected in. So technically, you don't. However, it does allow you to control posting to periods that you consider closed. It's very easy to inadvertently post to an open period. So it could be that I might be in December and August could still be open. And I could easily post transactions to August when they really should be 
post it to December. So when you do a methodical month end close every period, you can rest assured that those periods that are closed will not be posted to and therefore not have errors in the reporting. Now at the end of the period, when you close the period, you can perform three tasks. And you are going to perform three tasks. You're going to print reports and that allows you to review any of your out of balance transactions, outstanding balances, inventory shortages, for example, anything that needs processing before closing the period. You'll purge your data and that allows you to eliminate unwanted records that could conceivably save you disk space and allow your system to efficiently perform inquiries and process data. And the last task is to close the period after everything is in balance and that prepares you for the next period and for the next fiscal year.